Hi everybody, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Audrey and this is Audrey Approved. Today I'm going to be talking about books about or set in California. I have now lived in California for I think 13 or 14 years now and I'm always attracted to books about, you know, places I've been to or places that are familiar to me. So I have a, a vision for this video, we'll see how it actually turns out, but I'm going to use timestamps to break up uh, different kind of lumpings of books that are both geographic and thematic and it's going to be a mixture of quick book reviews and uh, books that I want to read, so a TBR video as well. We'll see how it goes, but uh, I'll jump right in. So one of the first things I think of when I think of California is just, uh, I guess, the, the landscape and the nature and the environment of California. So that's the first section that I want to talk about. The first book that I want to highlight is The Devil's Teeth, A True Story of Obsession and Survival Among America's Great White Sharks by Susan Casey, which I mentioned a few videos ago in a uh, unique memoirs video. But the area around San Francisco is really famous for its marine biodiversity, and this is a book that focuses on um, that aspect of, of California's environment, but also centering, centers in on the Farallon Islands, which is a group of kind of isolated rocky islands 30 miles off the coast of California. If you like marine biology, and if you like sharks, then this might be a book that you will enjoy. I think the author was a little bit frustrating to read about, but I, I learned a ton from this book, and I have thought about it quite a bit since I finished it. You can't talk about California's nature without highlighting its national parks. California has, I think, nine different national parks. I've been to, I think, all of them now. Um, and the next book recommendation is one that I finished last year, I think, and it takes place in one of the, I guess, lesser well-known national parks, which is down in Kings Canyon National Park. And this book is uh, The Last Season by Eric Blem, and it's all about uh, a ranger, a national park ranger, that goes missing. And I think for a book that's about uh, a true crime mystery, this is pretty respectful to um, that individual and his family. But I found it a really engrossing read because not only does it cover the mystery around uh, this missing ranger, but also a little bit of the history of the, of the park and of the national park system. So if you're gonna read it, don't look up anything about it because you're gonna get spoiled. But I thought this was a, a pretty entertaining read. Yosemite is probably California's most famous national park, and so I was really excited to pick up Guardians of the Valley, John Muir and the Friendship That Saved Yosemite by Dean King, because Yosemite is really famous, and then John Muir is perhaps one of the most uh, famous environmentalists of all time. And I started reading this, and I actually, I DNF'd it. I, I did like a, a bit of a soft DNF, so I, I would go back to it, but I really wasn't in the mood. It's a bit of a slow read, and it reminded me quite a bit of at least the first two or three hours of Ken Burns' uh, amazing documentary, which is, uh, I think it's called The National Parks America's Best Idea, or something like that, which is a, a wonderful, wonderful film. Um, so I would maybe go back to this if you're visiting Yosemite for the first time, maybe you might enjoy it, but um, that's one that I, I wanted to highlight. And then I also want to highlight a few books on my TBR for this category. So the first two are two books about big trees. California has really big redwood trees. These are both set, I think, in Northern California near Redwoods National Park. And they are The Wild Trees, A Story of Passion and Daring by Richard Preston, and The Ghost Forest, Racists, Radicals, and Real Estate in the California Redwoods by Greg King. I think the first of those two is a little bit more about um, studying redwoods and, and being up in, in the canopies of the redwoods. I think the second one, which is a really uh, recent release, I've seen it in my, um, <clears throat> in my local bookstores lately, is more like a comprehensive history. So I think I'm eyeing, uh, I think I'm eyeing the ghost forest over the wild trees, but I'm kind of waiting to see some reviews come back. And then a book that I recently added to my TBR, I think I saw it on the Instagram stories of uh, a bookshop that I follow, is uh, California Against the Sea, Visions for Our Vanishing Coastline by Rosanna Zaya, which comes out I think next month. And it's supposed to be a bit of um, politics meets economics meets ecology, all focused on California's 1200 mile coastline but it's described as being told through human stories, which is, you know, my favorite kind of, of nonfiction to read. So I'm eyeing this one and I'll check it out when it comes out. Another thing that I now associate with California is fires, which is 
unfortunate because I feel like when I first moved here, I never really thought about wildfire season. And now I think about it every year and I take it into account when I'm planning things like backpacking or, or camping because I know there's going to be some amount of time each, each year in the late summer where um, it's just really smoky and it's not good to be outside for too long. So the next section of books are all about wildfires. I want to highlight two graphic novels. The first is A Fire Story by Brian Faiz and this is actually the very first graphic novel I ever read. Um, and it's written by a, a cartoonist and an illustrator and uh, the author wrote it in response to or I guess as a way to express his experiences being a victim of I think it was the campfire no the Tubbs fire of 2017 he lost all of his home and his possessions and while I usually like graphic novels uh, as memoirs because I think it's a unique way to tell a personal story I wasn't a huge fan of the art style in this and then the author also used a whole bunch of text like there were sections and panels where there were just paragraphs of text and I don't really like that in graphic novels so this wasn't my favorite but I'm glad I I'm glad I read more graphic novels so it's, it's a medium that I that I do really enjoy and the second graphic novel I want to highlight is Dark Spaces by Scott Snyder and Hayden Sherman which is a single volume graphic novel that covers the experiences of a female convict labor group that is fighting wildfire. So California does employ prisoner labor. They pay them really horribly. I think it's like, you know, two or three dollars a day. And so this is a graphic novel that tries to combine fires, capitalism, and uh, commentary on the prison industrial complex as well as it adds in like this murder mystery. And that's a lot to do <laughs> in 150 pages um, through, through visual, uh, visual, I guess, um, descriptions. And I don't think it managed to do it very well. So unfortunately, both of these graphic novels are a pass for me. Moving away from graphic novels, we have Fire in Paradise, an American Tragedy by Alastair Guy and Danny Anguiano, which is all about um, the 2018 campfire. It's called the campfire, but it burned the town of Paradise. Uh, I think it killed like 85 or 90 different people. And this is an account of the events around that fire. Uh, the authors go into um, really excruciating like chronological detail as to the events that happened. One of my problems with this book is that the authors chose to follow like, I don't know, 30 or 40 different people. Um, and so it was really confusing trying to kind of follow the events because we kept switching back between all these different people and all their different experiences. And I kept getting, you know, confused and mixing up um, people. But I think this is a really harrowing read. One of the one of the saddest books, I think, the saddest nonfiction books I've ever read is also about a fire. It's a book by Daniel James Brown. Um, it's called The Great Firestorm or I'm blanking on the title right now, but I'll put it up. And like that, this is just incredibly sad. Um, there is another book about the Paradise Fire or the Camp Fire, and that is Paradise, One Town Struggle to Survive an American Wildfire by Lizzie Johnson, which came out after the one that I read. If I was choosing today, I'd probably pick this second book over the first one because it has a little bit better ratings and it seems like it, it, it goes a little bit more into like the history of and science of fires. Um, but if you're interested or if you remember that fire, then you might like uh, one of these two books. And then lastly in this section, I want to highlight California Burning, The Fall of Pacific Gas and Electric and What It Means for America's Power Grid by Catherine Blunt. And I include that, I include this in this section because um, the most popular utility company in California has been blamed for many of the wildfires that we've seen in the past few years. And so um, that utility company, PG&E, Pacific Gas and Electric, this is a history of it. And from the title, I was anticipating it to be like a history of PG&E wildfires, but I would argue this is more of like just a PG&E business history. And as such, there were sections that were a lot more interesting for me, like the ones talking about um, the early power grid in California. And there were sections that were not as interesting, like all the different bankruptcies PG&E has had and lawsuits. And so I would only recommend this for somebody that either works in utilities or pays a PG&E bill, like I do. Uh, and I think the rest of uh, 
or I guess the majority of California, I think two thirds of California pays uh, their utilities through PG&E. Those are the only two groups I would actually recommend this book to. Um, but yeah, if you have other books about fires, even if they're not set in California, let me know. It's a subject that I do have a, a lot of interest in. When it comes to historical events, uh, there's one on my, it's not an official on my TBR, it's like one I'm eyeing. It's How Much of These Hills is Gold by Si Pam Zheng, which I think is about two Chinese orphans during the California gold rush. I haven't picked this up. I'm The vibes it gives me is like historical fiction meets literary fiction, if that's right. Let me know, let me know if you recommend it. A book I can recommend wholeheartedly is one about California's Donner Party, which is uh, a group of American pioneers that came from the Midwest that uh, were trying to get to California and they took this shortcut um, that wasn't actually a shortcut and one of the, um, I guess, consequences of taking that, uh, that path is that they were forced to spend the winter in California's Sierras uh, up near uh, Lake Tahoe, if you've ever been there. and. Uh, they were not prepared for this, and so many of the members of the Donner Party had to resort to extreme measures in order to survive. And one of my favorite nonfiction books, I think just in general, is The Indifferent Stars Above, The Harrowing Saga of the Donner Party by Daniel James Brown. And this is the very first book I ever read from Daniel James Brown, and he has since become, I think, my favorite nonfiction writer. If you like history, uh, particularly American history with human-centered storytelling and narrative nonfiction, then you should absolutely uh, check Daniel James Brown out. I thought this was a, a fantastic and engrossing read about really famous events, but it's told with um, a lot of respect and with um, a lot of comprehension and a lot of, I, I guess, detail into what uh, what these these people might have been going through and why they had to resort to such extreme measures. So I totally recommend um, that book and, and really just anything by Daniel James Brown. Okay, the rest of the sections are gonna be split up geographically and I'm gonna start from Southern California and move my, move my way up north. So uh, the first uh, and only book I have for the like Los Angeles region is called Bad City, Peril and Power in the City of Angels by Paul Pringle which is uh, an interesting book. It's about um, three different scandals that have taken place at the University of Southern California, or USC, which is a, a private college down in Southern California in LA. And um, these have been kind of all over the news. I'd be surprised if you haven't heard about them. Um, and the book is like half that, but it's half a description of how you do investigative journalism. So Paul Pringle uh, won the Pulitzer Prize for his reporting. And this book, in this book, he is like a main character within this book because it talks about his experiences getting tips, how he does interviews, how he navigates dead ends. And those issues and the issues that he comes across when trying to do this sort of investigative journalism is the reason why this book is called Bad City and not, say, Bad School. So this is a book that was different than what I was anticipating walking into it, but I was pleasantly surprised if you're interested in how somebody does investigative journalism. This is a great book uh, to check out. As we move north, we hit the Central Valley, which is in between uh, Los Angeles and San Francisco. And the Central Valley is California's, I guess, agricultural uh, belt, where I'm pretty sure it's like over half of America's nuts and fruit and vegetables are grown, which is a wild number because half seems really high. But anyway, when I think of the Central Valley, the first author I think of is John Steinbeck. And so that's the, those are the books that I want to highlight first. Of John Steinbeck's books that are set within this geographical area, I have read um, Of Mice and Men, uh, Cannery Row, which is set in Monterey, California, and I've also read uh, East of Eden. I finished that just last week. Um, and then on my TBR for him is uh, The Grapes of Wrath, which I think is maybe his most famous work or maybe it's East of Eden. And I really like John Steinbeck. I think for being a classic, it's incredibly readable. He has a very direct uh, writing style that I think is accessible for both young and old um, and is something that, that I really enjoy. I also really enjoy how open and obvious he is with his themes. And I mean that in a good way. It's not like some obscure kind of meaning that you're trying to take away. Very frequently, 
the themes that John Steinbeck explores, his characters like verbally explore within their dialogue as well. Um, so yeah, I, I do really enjoy John Steinbeck. I want to work my way all the way through his backlist eventually, just taking my time. I think of the books that I have read of his, Of Mice and Men is, is my absolute favorite, but we'll see after I read uh, The Grapes of Wrath. A more modern take on this area is written by Jamie, I think, Cor Cortez in Gordo, which is a collection of a short stories set in uh, Watsonville, California in the 1970s. And I saw this recommended at a local bookstore of mine, and I was so glad that I decided to pick it up. It's, again, a collection of short stories, but they're all centered around a main character named Gordo. And Gordo is this young Mexican-American boy. It's not explicitly stated, but uh, he, he is queer. And he just wants to fit in. He wants friends. He wants to be cool. He wants to, you know, do fun things. He doesn't want to, you know, hang out with his, with his parents or his sister. And I just found him really endearing. He's probably one of the most endearing characters I've read in 2023 so far. And I think for a book that is written by an adult for an adult audience, but is writing from the point of view of a young adult, of a, of a, young, of a young child, uh, the author does a really good, well, a really good job um, with, I think, I think Gordo's voice and his characterization. I think that can be difficult to do. I don't always love uh, stories from the point of view of young characters. Um, but yeah, I think if you're interested, check this one out. It's a really short read and again, really endearing. And the last for this section is The Dreamt Land, Chasing Water and Dust Across California by Max Arax, which is a, I guess, anticipated five-star read for me. I haven't picked it up yet. When I was in college, I had to take like a general education class. I needed it to fit like a certain time slot. So I ended up taking this class about California and water and how water has greatly impact, specifically Southern California. And I loved it. I thought it was such an intriguing class. It's something I never would have picked for myself, but I was really glad that I took it. And so this looks like it follows kind of a, a similar kind of topic where it covers the politics and the economics and the environment of California with respect to water, but I think through the lens of particularly farmers. And the author is from the Central Valley, and so I'm hoping that this is, per usual, a human-centered history of, of the area. Uh, I also really love this cover. And then the last section for this video is just the San Francisco Bay Area. So for San Francisco proper, I actually don't have any books. I know that there is um, The Joy Luck Club by, I think, Amy Tan, which I haven't read. And there's also um, The Man in the High Castle by Philip K. Philip K. Dick, I think, which is an alternative history. I think it's where Japan won World War II, maybe, but I think it's set in San Francisco. I haven't read either of those, so if you have read them, let me know if they're, if they're worth checking out. I did pick up um, The Maltese Falcon by Dashiell Hammett, which is like a San Francisco, San Francisco crime noir kind of book. And I know that this is a more dated read, but I was so annoyed with the female character in, in this novel that I, I DNF'd it with a lot of anger. So I don't actually have any books to recommend for San Francisco, but if you're interested across the Bay Bridge, uh, there are some books I wanna highlight set in Oakland. There There by Tommy Orange had a lot of literary and critical acclaim when it came out. It is a story about uh, a group of characters that are all uh, native characters living in Oakland. And the book starts really wide with kind of the different viewpoints and different experiences of all these characters. And then as the novel progresses, their lives start to overlap and the book ends in this kind of big crescendo. I did really enjoy Tommy Orange. I think he's coming out with a new book. I think maybe I read that somewhere, um, but I would definitely check that out um, if I, if I, or when I figure out what it is. <laughs> um, and then another book that has come out recently that also has had a lot of, of critical acclaim is Night Crawling by Layla Motley, which is a, it's a sad read. Uh, maybe sad's not the right word. It's a heartbreaking and sobering read. It's about uh, a young girl living in Oakland and her relationship with her brother and the Oakland Police Department, and she's pulled into 
kind of a, a dark and, and sexual kind of relationship with some of the Oakland police officers. Um, and this is really about a story of, of being in a situation that you can't get out of and not having any good options, so taking the only options that come your way. I thought this was hard to read, but important and also important because it is based off of real events. I remember in 2017 when some of the news articles uh, came out about a real young woman who had been, you know, having relations with a lot of the Oakland Police Department. This ties into my last Oakland book pick, which is The Writers Come Out at Night, Brutality, Corruption, and Cover-Up in Oakland by Ali Winston and Darwin Von Graham, which is all about systematic corruption and, um, and violence within the Oakland Police Department, which has had way more scandals and issues than what feels like even other police departments. Um, and so I think that this is, I mean, this is a book that I don't, I don't really want to read, but I feel like I should read because I want to educate myself and because it's, it's, it's local history. So I, I'm anticipating this to be frustrating. I am going to read it soon for an upcoming um, book club, but it's one that I want to highlight and the people that I do know that have already read it have said that it was uh, very good. And lastly is maybe the most obvious of uh, the topics when you think of California. I'm doing it last because uh, I've already done a, a bit of a video on it, but it's just Silicon Valley and all of the, the technology and the industry in the area. So I did do a video on technology and tech giants. So if you're interested in business histories when it comes to uh, Tesla or Theranos or Google or Instagram, then you can check out that video or review uh, those books. And so the only one that I really want to highlight in this is uh, a newer book that's come out that's called The Code. Silicon Valley and the Remaking of America by Margaret O'Mara, which is a book all about people that built Silicon Valley. I think there's there's another book that's also come out that's I think very similar. It's called Palo Alto. It's got this really nice cover. Um, that one I'm also debating as well. They're both really long, uh, so I'm kind of waiting to see some of the reviews come back. But those are the, the only books that I'm interested uh, when it comes to Silicon Valley and technology because I feel a little bit saturated in those types of books lately. But um, yeah, it was fun to compile this list uh, and talk a little bit about California, I guess how I interpret and how I see California as a Californian resident. Um, maybe I've inspired you to do your own video on your own um, place that you live or place that you really care about, but I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye.